This is an amendment that is very simple. It will prohibit the administration from using the funds in this bill to award new contracts to any company that has overcharged the government by $100 million or more in Iraq. This is just common sense. No company that squanders over $100 million of taxpayers' money should be rewarded with new contracts. If the administration won't protect the taxpayer against waste, fraud, and abuse, the Congress must act for, a, for the sake of the taxpayers and the troops. I urge support for this amendment and I reserve the balance of my time. Uh, this could have very far-reaching effect, not only on future contracts, but on existing contracts. And I would hate to see the flow, uh, the logistical flow of supplies uh, to our troops in the field interrupted because of this amendment. Frankly, I was tempted to accept the amendment, but uh, having uh, thought about it, uh, we just really haven't had time to know exactly what the effect is going to be. Will the gentleman yield? Uh, of course I would. Well, I want to assure you that we were very careful in drafting this amendment. It is prospective. It would not affect the funding of existing contracts for troop support. They'll continue untouched. The amendment simply says that we won't reward companies with new contracts after they overcharge the taxpayer by $100 million. So I hope that will allay the gentleman's concerns. The idea that, uh, that, price, that prices are un have been unreasonable and, uh, and that there's contracts where they have uh, uh, abused the American taxpayer, abused the contract process, well, let's, uh, let's take that under the regular order. And if that's true, let's hold people accountable. Uh, let's hold the corporation accountable. Uh, but the idea that we single out a, uh, a group of people, which is thousands and thousands of Americans who support our fighting personnel, and basically paralyze that operation is unreasonable. The gentleman is recognized for two I minutes. I thank the gentleman for, for yielding, and I rise in support of the Waxman-Dingle Amendment, which is about waste, fraud, and abuse. That's it. And, and this is the full extent of the amendment, eight lines, very simple. All it says is that uh, none of the funds appropriated or made available by this act shall be obligated or expended by the Secretary of the Army to any contractor if the Defense Contract Audit Agency has determined that more than $100 million of the contractor's costs for contracts involving work in Iraq under one or more Army contracts were unreasonable. So we set up a process to get rid of waste, fraud, and abuse. How long does it take to figure that out? I can't imagine that anybody in this body wants to fund waste, fraud, and abuse, particularly in excess of $100 million. That's what this is about. Like I said, it, it, it sounds like a good idea, but we just got to be sure we do not want to interrupt the, the logistical flow of whatever our troops need to carry out their mission. And there's a major mission underway in Iraq as we speak, Operation Swarmer uh, near Samara, that is a, the, the biggest operation since the war started. Uh, we can't afford to upset uh, an ongoing operation like that. We've got to support our troops, and if a policy change like this has a negative effect, that's just not good, and it's not good for our troops. So I would hope we would oppose this amendment.
I hope they will bear with me as I once again describe the issues of contracting that, that exist because we are spending so much money in such a hurry that there is waste and fraud and abuse that just simply cannot be addressed in the regular order. And I, and I believe uh, this amendment is, I would say to my colleague from uh, Virginia, the chairman, this amendment is once again a proposal that we establish a Truman-type committee of the type that existed uh, when Harry Truman served here in the United States Senate. Uh, it was a Democratic Senate then with a Democrat in the White House and Harry Truman, I'm sure, caused uh, some real angst at the White House by saying, I think there needs to be a special committee established, a bipartisan committee, to take a look at waste and fraud and abuse in military contracting. He traveled all across this country, Harry Truman did, to military installations and met with contractors and his committee unearthed a substantial amount of waste. And uh, I, I offer it again, I, as I've offered it on previous occasions, and I understand I have not been successful previously, but I offer it again only because I don't think the problem is, has abated. I think the problem exists, the problem likely grows. I suggest strongly that this amendment not be accepted, because if it would do so, it would be in effect overruling what we're doing on the permanent subcommittee, and secondly, Congress would be stepping into the role that's now being performed by inspector generals, being performed by the General Accountability Office, and indeed an inspector general special designated by the Congress and the Secretary of Defense for Iraq and other nations. So with that, Mr. President, uh, I will not move to table this because I feel very strongly that the Senate should address it in the same manner it has addressed it in previous occasions three times and rejected. What, what strikes me is that there is not a sense of outrage, outrage, that American tax dollars are being wasted, but even more important, that American troops are being shortchanged. What do we ask of these men and women in uniform? Quite simply, we say take an oath to wear this uniform and risk your life for America. How much more could we ask of them? And they do it. And then they expect from us support. Support when they're in the field and support when they come home. I don't understand why there isn't a sense of outrage in this Congress on a bipartisan basis, on both sides of the aisle, that we're not only being ripped off as taxpayers by these no-bid contracts, but that we're shortchanging these men and women who are risking their lives while we stand in the comfort and safety of this Senate chamber. I know Halliburton's a big political force in this town. I know that on some quarters you're not supposed to question Halliburton. This is some sacred institution politically. I don't buy it. I count the soldiers that are putting their lives on the line to me much more sacred and much more value than any big, huge, no-bid corporation. And I would say to the senator from North Dakota, we've done this before, the two of us joined together and said, let us put together a bipartisan effort, a commission that'll ask the hard questions, a commission that'll bring people in and put them under oath, find out if they're cheating us, finding out if they're profiteering during a war, find out if they're shortchanging our soldiers and let the chips fall where they may. And if we find that there's been a violation of law, even if it reaches all the way up to the boardroom, so be it. How many times have we come to the floor, I asked the senator from North Dakota, refresh my memory. How many times have we brought this this option to the, to the Senate and said to our colleagues, please, for the sake of the troops, let's have real oversight. Let's ask these questions. 